Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am back to do the booktube knickknack tag in which I pull off every little knickknack on my bookshelves and around my bookcases and uh, just tell you a little bit about them. I know um, I did my bookshelf tour a couple of months ago so you will have seen uh, a few of these knickknacks along the way. However, this is the opportunity for me to tell you a little bit about them because I know if my audience is anything like me then they'll be a little bit nosy about the things that people put on their bookcases. I know I certainly am. But yes, as you can see, these are the bookcases behind me. You can probably see that there are a few things dotted around. And I was tagged by the lovely Ed from Gagging for Lit. So let's get into the knickknacks. So right next to my bed, the bookcase that you will find is my history bookcase. This is just a little teeny tiny bookcase, which I've had since I was a tiny, tiny child. I had it for quite a few years. And then when we moved to this house, I gave it to my parents because I was getting new Billy bookcases put in. Um, and since they have redecorated the other room I have re-adopted it and it is now my history bookcase and I quite like having this bookcase because it comes to around about chest level uh, which means that if I end up outgrowing all of these bookcases behind me um, I've got like quite a bit of space up top that I can rest books on but for now uh, it is playing host to my cuddly toys because I may be 25 years old, but I'm a child at heart. So yes, a common theme that you'll see appearing uh, in the little knickknacks and trinkets around my room is that I'm a big, big Disney fan. And in particular, I am a very big fan of the genie in Aladdin, the original uh, 1992 Aladdin starring Robin Williams. It's my favorite Disney character of all time. So yes, when I saw this little genie plushie in the Disney store, I had to grab it. And he has also now become my two-year-old niece's favorite Disney character. However, she seems to prefer the the 2019 live action remake and no I do not approve I do not approve at all <laughs> but she does love this plushy toy I bring it downstairs whenever she's round and she's like Jeannie Jeannie honestly I think she's more excited to see Jeannie than she is to see me which rude I also have this little grumpy plushy grumpy is my favorite of the seven dwarfs I feel like he has the most complete character arc in the <laughs> in the original movie of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs because he starts off hating Snow White and not wanting anything to do with her to the really really sad funeral scene where he is sobbing and I it, it makes me cry yeah I'm definitely reading too much into it but yeah we like what we like. And then finally for my Disney plushies, I have Olaf from Frozen. Now, funny story with this, uh, Olaf was not originally my plushie. This was actually my mum's because Olaf is one of her favorite Disney characters. And a few months into her owning him and having him on my mum and dad's bed, uh, my dad decided that we could no longer have Olaf on their bed because apparently there was like some sort of freak uh, weather thing where like for months and months on end, it was freezing cold and snowing all the time in West Yorkshire. And he blamed Olaf. Yeah, I can't really explain that either. <laughs> uh, so now I have adopted him and uh, I think he's quite happy with the other kids. We also have my little Disney ears which I got when I went to Disney World Florida when I was 16 and I am dying to be able to go to Disney again so that I can wear these because they're really fun. And then the last little cuddly toy, which is a non-Disney related one, is this little elephant. This is the most recent acquisition and comes with a little bit of a story because I actually bought this when I was feeling kind of kind of down because I bought this on the day that I was made redundant from my job because of COVID. Very sound financial decision. Get told that you've been made redundant and then run off to Sainsbury's and buy a little elephant toy. I, I make good choices. But yes, this is the first of what will become a little bit of a theme, which is that elephants are my favorite animal. And yeah, this was part of like the Mother's Day display of little cuddly toys, but um, I decided, even though I am not a mother, that I was gonna keep this for myself. <laughs> So yes, those are all of the little knickknacks and trinkets on my history bookcase. Now into the, the main event. So as you all know from my bookshelf tour, the bookcase on the far side houses all of my books that uh, I accumulated from childhood, from teenage years, uh, and some like romantic comedy, that kind of stuff. So I've kind of themed uh, the things that I have around that. First off, I have this little fairy sitting on a toadstool. You can probably tell I've had this for quite a few years. I'm pretty sure that this was like a vibrant purple, but it's been satisfying in the sun for quite a while and has turned a lot more pale. It's also meant to hold photos, uh, but I just keep it as is. Um, and yeah, when I was a little child, I used to absolutely adore fairies. I think I was really inspired by the fairy tale movie, which is all about the Cottingley fairies and that whole scandal, but the, it plays it for true. So yeah, I sit this up next to my fairy tale collections I have there. I feel like that's the right place for this to sit. Then on the same bookshelf, I've got these little Disney Sum Sums. I don't know if th th this is still a thing, but I know a few years ago, Sum Sums were really really popular. I had friends that used to collect all of these um, but I decided to hold my horses and just get like my two favourite characters. So once again, Genie and Grumpy 
and uh, they sit quite happily on my shelves. And then the last knickknack on that particular bookcase repeats a trend from before and we've got this little elephant figure. Not actually 100% sure where I got this from um, but I, I really like it. He doesn't he look happy. The next bookcase along is the slightly slimmer one which houses my Christmas books, my favourite series, my plays and poetry. So I've got things around those themes. Next up though at the top of the bookcase I've got this little owl bookend and I do have another one of these but I currently keep that on my TBR trolley and um, so you'll see him in a little while. But yeah just a little owl sitting on two books. And then yes my two favourite fantasy series live on these bookcases which is Harry Potter and A Song of Ice and Fire. Why could I not have loved fantasy series where the authors are not completely problematic? I don't know but here we are. But yes I do have a little collection of merch from those two series. I have a little postcard of Hogsmeade pinned up on my Harry Potter shelf along with a little constant vigilance pin. I initially purchased that pin in order to wear but it actually came broken with the pin just like bent at an angle. So I emailed the seller and they were completely fine to send me a new one and I just kept uh, the original one just stuck on the bookcase so it's not going to waste. Um, so first up on the Harry Potter shelf I've got this little Pop Funko of Remus Lupin. If you know me you'll know that my favourite character in the Harry Potter series is Remus Lupin. I just think he's fantastic. Him tied with Neville Longbottom. I suppose I just really really like my quiet Gryffindors because I am a quiet Gryffindor. And I actually bought this from Shaw from Thoroughly Enjoyed Books. So thank you very much Shaw for my little Lupin figure. I'm treating him very well. Then I have this little Gryffindor crest which I, I don't think I'm ever going to get around to pinning on anything so it just sits on my bookcase. Then lastly I've got this little Hedwig mug from my best friend Sophie. She got this for me for Christmas and originally um, if you were here there's some little uh, notes at the bottom of this uh, because I had really grand plans for filling this mug with like my favourite moments from the year 2020 right at the beginning of the year um, so that I could look back at the end of the year and say oh I did this I did that oh look at all the great things that happened in 2020. Obviously I could never have predicted what 2020 would actually be so uh, basically I just have memories from January and February and that's it. It was a nice idea but maybe next year. Next up is my A Song of Ice and Fire or Game of Thrones shelf and if you know me very very well you will know that my favourite character in Game of Thrones is Sansa Stark. I just love her. I think she is so so fantastic and I feel like she was really really overlooked in the first like three or four seasons and then she really came into her own. I feel like as somebody who is similarly quite a quiet person um, and especially somebody who is not a tomboy and is not a fighter naturally um, and who is very quiet and observant I feel like I could see a lot of myself in Sansa so I was always like a big champion of her. So basically my A Song of Ice and Fire shelf has just developed into a shrine to Sansa Stark, the Queen in the North, who really should have been the Queen of the Seven Kingdoms but fine Dan and Dave do what you want, go wild. I have another little cutout picture uh, glued to that shelf which has a quote from the books which does not actually appear in the TV series but it is, my skin has turned from porcelain to ivory to steel. Really speaking of the ways in which Sansa's horrible experiences within the series have really strengthened her. She's gone from being this meek and mild little girl into being a very resilient woman and I really feel like that quote really encapsulates that. And then I have some Pop Funko. For a really really long time Pop Funko just would refuse to do little vinyls of Sansa Stark apart from in her like uh, dark Sansa get up from season four and it's like can we not just please have a red-haired Sansa because that's how she appears in most of the show but we have this little one which was inspired by her season seven outfits and then this one which is from the finale here we go my my, my queen and then the last little knickknack I have to show you from that particular shelf comes from my plays shelf in which sat nestled in with all my Shakespeare plays is I feel like at first glance a skull is quite an odd thing for me to own. However, um, it was probably this time last year that I picked this up. I think I saw this in like a TK Maxx or a Home Sense or somewhere like that. Um, I was just out and about with my mum and I saw this and if you know me you will know that I am a big fan of like blue floral print. I mean like you see, you see? And I saw this hidden away with all of the Halloween stuff and I just looked at it and I thought well if I'm gonna have a skull in my house well it's gonna be this one isn't it? And I've named her Ophelia so we've still got the Hamlet reference but it's not quite as on the nose as calling it Yorick. And of course like this is what you see in my profile picture on all of my social media is just me like so uh yeah 
this uh, this has unintentionally become like very very prominent on all of my social media now. Next up we're getting into the more visible bookcases here and on this bookcase we have a couple of cards here. Firstly we've got this little Marilyn Monroe one which came from Shaw when she sent me Lupin. Just this lovely little card of Marilyn Monroe putting on her makeup which I don't know if Shaw knew that I am a big fan particularly of Audrey Hepburn. I've got this little black and white Audrey Hepburn pillow uh, but I thought it goes very very nicely uh, with the aesthetic in my room. So I keep her in the middle here and then I also have a thank you card that I recently got from Kieran from KD Books. This went along with the books and the little scavenger hunt that he set for me which I'm gonna link the video off down below. I have this little violin pencil sharpener which I refuse to actually use as a pencil sharpener because like look at it it's so pretty. But yes uh, this alludes to the fact that for quite a few years I played the violin. I've still got my violin uh, but I've not played it in about five years. Really really sorry to my old violin teacher. I'm really sorry. At some point I do really want to get back into having violin lessons um, but at the moment whilst I'm not working and I don't have like flowing income coming in um, it's not really the priority for me but it will happen hopefully some point in my life I will start playing violin again. And then the last little trinkets that I have on that particular bookcase are all to do with the University of York which is of course where I did my BA and my masters. But I got these little trinkets on my graduation day this time round. We have this little coaster which just has all of the prominent things on campus. I'll just let you have a look at that probably can't see that at all. And then if you've been to the University of York you will know that uh, the wildlife is quite amazing at York. There are a lot of ducks and swans and geese so to celebrate that uh, I got given this little duck when I graduated and I love him. I love him so much. I don't think I've named him yet though so give me some ideas for a name for this guy. The first thing that you really need to know if you are going to be a University of York student is that there are lots of ducks and geese and you need to make sure that you do not mess with them and basically learn how to walk with your eyes to the ground so that you don't step into anything. Next up we are on to this final big bookcase before we get into my TBR trolley and the only thing that currently sits on this shelf is this little elephant jewellery holder. I've just taken off the pins uh, just to show you the elephant holder a little bit more uh, but this was another gift from my best friend Sophie. She knows how much I love elephants and uh, she also knew that I'm a big fan of anthropology which is where she got this from uh, but not really a massive fan of how expensive things from anthropology are. <laughs> I used to not really have much of a use for this. It used to just sit and be ornamental but now uh, it holds my enamel pins and is very useful. But yeah I'm pretty sure that this time last year I didn't own a single enamel pin and now suddenly I have a bunch of them. I think the theme that comes up the most throughout my enamel pins is Harry Potter. I've got four little Harry Potter based enamel pins uh, so we'll get through those quickly. And actually looking at them only one of them is an official Harry Potter merch pin. The rest of them are all fan made which I think is really lovely. Firstly from the official pins I've got this little chocolate frog pin. Then I have this little Gryffindor one which was made by Literary Emporium with a little lion that says courage at the bottom. They obviously have them for the rest of the houses as well. Uh, this is actually quite a big pin. I don't think I expected it to be so big when I bought it but uh, it's quite nice. It's like having a little little crest pin. We have this pin which is inspired by the Hogwarts Express ticket so it says platform nine and three quarters one way London to Hogwarts. And then my second of the constant vigilance pins. This is the one that actually works and functions as a pin. This is of course inspired by Mad-Eye Moody's famous quote constant vigilance you know always prepping the trio to make sure that they are constantly on their guard. And I feel like I've got weird affinity for constant vigilance as a quote because uh, when I went on my I don't know if it's the open day or the offers day for the University of York um, I went to a little guest lecture uh, and then I went into the toilets and uh, anybody who's been to university knows that uh, the toilet stalls are prime place to put posters especially if you are a member of a society or like if you are trying to get people involved in your dissertation research uh, people will always put posters up on the toilet stalls. So yes I went into the little toilet stall and the one and only poster that was stuck on my toilet stall was a little A4 piece of paper which said constant vigilance and had Mardo Moody's eye on it and for some reason something clicked there and I thought hmm 
I think these are my people. <laughs> Next up, fitting into a former theme on my knickknacks, we have this little genie pin. Basically, my friend Lizzie went to Disneyland Paris last year, and I think she went a little bit mad in the gift merch section. And she bought me a couple of genie-related things from Disney, so I'm very, very thankful to you, Lizzie. Thanks very much. What's really sad is I've got all of these great pins, and because I've not been out much for the past, like, six months, I've not been able to wear them anywhere. Another literary emporium one, uh, one that you will have seen in my last video is this little Elizabeth Bennet. My courage always rises at every attempt to intimidate me. I then have this little Anne Boleyn pin, you know, as you do, because she is one of my favourite historical figures. And at the moment she is my favourite of the six wives, though that could be likely to change. I feel like the queen that is most likely to change that is Catherine Parr, but I've not read a full biography of her yet. I have this little Votes for Women pin, which is actually quite a diddy little pin. I thought it was going to be a lot bigger than it actually ended up being. Uh, but yes, my little little nod to the suffragettes. I then have a couple of musical theatre pins from their official merch stalls. This little waitress pin of a little slice of pie. Unfortunately, I didn't go to waitress early enough to get one of the pioneer pins. I'd have loved to have gotten one of those, but I do have this little thing, which I love. And then this little pin from Come From Away, which by the way, is one of the best pieces of theatre that I have ever seen. If you do get the chance to go see Come From Away, highly, highly recommend it. I really hope it comes on tour soon. And then finally, a little bit more of a personal one we've got this little purple flower this is actually a pin that me and the rest of my family members all wore to my nana's funeral my nana on my mum's side her name was violet so of course purple flower very symbolic so i like to hang on to this in memory of her and then we are almost done with the bookshelves we've got just my tbr trolley now to do like i said in my bookshelf tour my tbr trolley mainly hosts my tbr <laughs> predictably i also host any of the books that i have read during the month but I have not yet done a review for or done a wrap up for. And basically the general theme behind any of the trinkets in there is what is able to hold up and prop up these books. So firstly once again back on the genie trend we have this mug. Another gift from my friend Lizzie when she went to Disneyland um, and she got me this little mug and um, I, I kind of thought this this is just too good to drink from. Also kind of a bit of a weird shape to drink things out of. Uh, how can I put this to better use? And uh, at the moment hold off my, my colourful pens, hold my scissors, uh, and this is a great little thing to hold back books. Also holding my books are these two little games of Cards Against Humanity. I've got the regular UK edition and then I've got this green box. And my friend Lizzie also has a Disney version, which I really want to get my hands on. A slightly more boring little trinket holding up books is this little um, Wittard's Christmas hot chocolate uh, box. This had white hot chocolate in it and it was glorious. My favourite kind of hot chocolate. Uh, and yeah, that just holds all my highlighters and usually it holds all of my bookmarks but uh, at the moment I've got quite a lot of books on my TBR so they've all gone out aside from this one. And then I told you we'd come back round to that second owl book holder and here we go, here it is. The second of my two owl bookends. So when they are together they look like this. And since my little library setup does happen to be in my bedroom, I might as well show you the rest of the knickknacks around my room and just show you the few knickknacks that sit on my windowsill. First up, following the theme of before, we have this little owl candle holder. And yeah, this is basically just decorative for me. I don't tend to put tea lights in this, uh, but it does follow very nicely with my little theme of having elephants and owls in my bedroom. Some more little cuddly toys here. We've got these two little teddies who are dressed up as an elephant and a giraffe. And the story behind these is that I picked them up on a school trip to Rome so uh, these were the only things I think I've kept from that Rome trip so they hold a special place in my heart for that. Once again can you tell that I like elephants? I really like elephants. Next up I might be the only person who is on that like millennial generation z cusp who does not have an affinity for plants i just don't understand like what do you, what do you do with them how do you know that they're doing well I, I don't know so instead i have some fake plants because you know i've got a pretty good chance of not killing these guys however sticking with the millennial gen z stereotype i have named my fake plants we have angelica eliza and peggy the Skylar plants. <laughs> I then always like to have a little candle and um, something that uh, was joked about in one of my reading vlogs was the fact that I seem to have Christmas candles out of season and yeah, it, it, this is true. Honestly, it's just, I really like the smell of like baked good vanilla kind of scents. They're the only kind of candles that I like and <laughs> it makes me happy. 
So yeah, this is the Christmas cookie candle from Yankee Candle. Yeah, if anybody wants to buy me a non-bookish gift, just get me like vanilla bakery scented candles and I will be very, very happy. And then last but not least, we have this little duck. One of these lovely little decorative ducks. It's just got roses all the way around. And this is probably like the oldest knickknack that I have here. Um, I got this from my friend India back when we were like 13 years old, I wanna say. And yeah, there have been many, many a Marie Kondo inspired declutter that has happened in my room and the knickknacks have all been purged, but this one has always survived. So I think it's safe to say I like this. I don't know, does anybody remember like 2007, 2008 kind of time when these kind of ducks were like the big thing? I swear when I was a teenager, everybody wanted one of these. It was like the gift to give. And I don't know why, but the, 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 I think they've got a bit of charm to them. But yes, those are all of the knickknacks around my little library space. I don't know if this was particularly interesting to anybody. Um, I know that I'm really nosy and I always like to see what people have decorating their shelves. So I hope this has been at least some way entertaining for you. Maybe explains a lot about me. I don't know. In terms of who to tag, I mean, the, funnily enough, the two people who come to mind straight away are Grace from GK Reads and Sylvie from the TBR Diaries. However, I know that they have just moved in to their new places separately, not together, I, do, I don't think. Anyway, <laughs> plot twist. Um, but I don't know if they've got their shelves all sorted out. Uh, but yeah, um, anybody really who wants to do this tag, I'd love to see all of the knickknacks and bits and bobs that you have lying around your bookcases. I hope you are all having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.